one. All right, so we were the Latin group. Um, and for those of you who are here on our presentation day, you might recognize this picture. This is a picture of the Library of Celsus at Ephesus. Um, and this area, Ephesus, is really kind of what I want to talk about when we're discussing culture. Um, the important thing that anybody needs to know and probably already knows about Roman culture is that it was incredibly widespread. By the time that suic of the suicide of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, the Romans had conquered the entire known world. And for anybody who doesn't know exactly what the boundaries of that are, that includes all the Greek cities, Asia Minor, north into parts of Europe, um, and the entire northern part of Africa, including Egypt. So this city um, kind of represents that. This was actually inhabited in the Neolithic Age, um, which is way prior to the time that you would have called anything Greek. It wasn't really Greek, it was just a bunch of people. But it was inhabited then. And then it was established as an Ionian city when the Greeks traversed across the Aegean to start inhabiting Asia Minor, where they kind of got together with the people who were already there, including what might now be referred to as people of Turkey, um, which is where the city is now. And they were cohabiting, and they formed the city of Ephesus. Um, this city was an Ionian city during the time of the Ionian League, when the Greeks sought to kind of unite um, all of the people who were on Asia Minor and kind of establish um, a sort of government that would help keep everybody running and alive. Um, this city was also around during the supposed um, Peloponnesian War, during the siege of, siege of Troy. Um, it was eventually conquered by the Romans at the same time that the Romans conquered all the rest of the Ottoman cities. Um, and this city was technically freed from any Ottoman control that was over it, but that means, of course, that it was then controlled by Rome. Um, the city is in the Bible, in the book of Revelations. Um, John was also supposed to have wrote um, one of his books here. Um, it's now called Ephesians. He sat at the top of the theater, which I don't have displayed, and kind of wrote about it. Um, and now this city, um, at the end of the Roman Empire, deferred back to Ottoman control and is now a Turkish landmark um, where you can kind of go and visit and see really cool things. We laid under this library for like half an hour. It was really cool. <laughs> now the important thing about the fact that Roman culture was so widespread is that its language needed to be able to do that too. While Rome conquered a lot of places, it took in pieces of their culture, and it had to make its culture available to everyone. The, the Turks, the Greeks, the Egyptians, everyone needed to be able to have a basic understanding of Latin, which means that it, it was really very easy. There are a couple things you have to know about tense, uh, case declension, which I'm gonna talk about when I discuss the questionnaire, but aside from that, you could have a very limited knowledge and a very limited vocabulary and still be able to express what you needed to express in case the Roman officials came to collect your taxes or something like that. Jesus and Mary and Joseph, they knew some Latin, even though they didn't really live anywhere near Rome. So, um, the thing about the questionnaire is that while it covered some <laughs> of the most important parts of the language, it didn't cover a lot of other important parts, and I'm going to kind of show you that. Um, Latin is all about suffixes. So, in these first couple sentences, you see the difference between a regular suffix here and a plural suffix here. And you see that there's an I added onto the end of the word man when you want it to be men. What you can't see is that these suffixes and these ways of writing the word is actually part of a larger system of suffixes, which is based on a noun's case and a noun's number and sometimes a noun's gender. So declensions in Latin, there are five of them, define what kind of suffixes you can add on to the word. It basically just makes them easier to spell, easier to say, because you can't add the same ending onto every word. That would just be goofy. You wouldn't be able to pronounce them all right. So you have endings based on the word's position in the sentence, which the questionnaire didn't really give us a chance to kind of bring to fruition. If the word is the subject, the direct object, the indirect object, if it's possessive, it's going to get a different ending. You don't really get to see that too much, but it's important to know when we talk a little bit later. One of the other important things, I'm actually just gonna skip to it. Actually, the most important thing is verbs. Now, the thing that 
the questionnaire kind of focused on was aspect. Did you stop walking? Did you start walking? Were you walking for a short amount of period or were you walking for a long <coughs> amount of time? And we don't have that in Latin. See here it says aspect is habitual. It's technically the exact same thing as a past tense, which is right up here. It's the exact same thing. It doesn't change. And if you go down a little bit later where you see finished walking or started walking, we don't have aspects that have anything to do with the verb. You actually would make started or stopped the verb and then use the infinitive form of walking, or you could use a gerundive, which I did in this case because I think it makes it sound a lot better and look a lot better. It's easier to understand. The thing that this questionnaire didn't really let us do is talk about all the kind of tenses that there are in Latin. As many of you know from when I explained it before, there are six tenses in Latin. We were only able to ever use three, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but anyway, we're going to be done with that. So that's kind of my area of expertise as the person who guided this group. I know about the culture. I know about the language. But what we were able to do together is the rules. And I would like for my colleagues to show you what they have learned and what they did. Just real quick, a little bit more about um, what uh, we learned from the uh, grammar questionnaire was um, some of the pronunciation. Um, you know, each language has its own uh, accents and pronunciation. And uh, Latin, we don't know how it was specifically pronounced. So if you go to other places in the world, depending on where you are, they'll pronounce Latin in a different way. Um, the one thing that we did learn is anytime you see a B, it's pronounced like it's a W. So I just thought I would add that in, that um, each country has its own um, pronunciation of Latin. Um, we're going to go into linguist assistant. So you know, we kind of want to do this in real time so you guys can see what's going on here. Plus, I'm really bad at screen. So now making for <laughs> the lexicon is like the dictionary, um, and the lexicon is where you put all the words um, in your language. So um, this is the noun lexicon for Latin. Um, we have the stems, the gender, and the declension, which are features that we set for all the nouns. Uh, we specify. Um, and then we made rules later to add on the endings to them, because as Caitlin explained, it's a very suffix-heavy language. Um, we go up to the five declensions. Um, we never really went past the third. I don't think we used any past the second. No. Um, but there's masculine, feminine, feminine and neuter. Um, unlike Spanish, where it's just feminine and masculine, there are actually three here. which those are the infinitive forms, and then we have um, the conjugations of those. And then we also had to specify the present stem and past stem, which do change. Um, again, it's a suffix heavy language, so we're just adding on suffixes to the verbs. Uh, so, or, like the, they're different words, like the, the U and the E. They're, they're the same, but there's always a little bit difference between specify those as well. And then for adjectives, we didn't have any other forms or features really. Um, those are, again, just suffixes that are added on to the stem of the word. And um, we have to, now if you go into the uh, generator, we have to specify the word order. You guys might know this looks a little funny. Sorry about that. It's kind of squishy. It's okay. We'll figure it out. So uh, we just pretty much specified the order in which we wanted things to appear. Um, the way you see it, top to bottom is pretty much how it appears in a sentence. Um, that's really it, like you can drag them around. Ignore the this, that, I was experimenting, sorry. And then, it applies for all the other ones too, like verb phrases. Okay, that's just a We did, uh, at the very
very bottom clause was, was the one that we really messed with. Yeah, so this is the, the uh, main constituent of Latin that really uh, put us on where we want it to be. Because Latin doesn't really have much of a word order, because um, everything's based on the suffixes, so it could pretty much go anywhere in the sentence and still have the same meaning. But to make it easier, we put it in this order. That way it's closer to what we're familiar with, so it's easier to work with. All right, we're going to move on to feature copying rules, uh, <coughs> which was another thing that we focused on because Latin, uh, as has already been mentioned, has a lot of suffixes, um, and that includes Includes person, gender, and we'll um, see that as we go through. So these were a couple of rules, um, which uh, so we had to add in a noun phrase, and within the noun phrase, which we learned, um, you have to put in the adjective uh, phrase. And so what we're doing is we're taking all the features of the noun, and we're copying it to the adjective um, because you need. Uh, as it says here, number um, and as well as person to be copied from or from the noun um, to the adjective in order for the sentence to be grammatically correct. Um, and this is also important. Um, there's uh, there's case, um, which is a feature of the noun phrase, not the noun itself. And so we had to make sure that not only um, nouns within the noun phrase, but the noun phrase features itself were copied to the adjective. So again, that there's adjective and noun agreement. Um, again, uh, the noun is where the features are at, um, and you want to make sure that they are copied not just to the adjective, but also to the verb. Um, that way, just like in English, you know, we wouldn't say um, he walk, we say he walks, you know. So we have to make sure that they agree with each other in order to make sense. Um, yeah. Pronouns. And then um, we made it. We made tables for the pronouns. Um, there, it's under the spell out rules. There, for the nouns. And then we have the third person singular pronoun. So we just have um, the case running along the side here. And then the gender across the top. It's, it's simply just a new translation, just like you would say he in English. You would just say the appropriate pronoun for the right case in it. And, the, and we made sure these only apply for the singular third person pronouns. Um, and, then, and then for the plural pronouns, it's the same exact thing. Um, it's just some of the ones are different. So instead of just making it complicated, we just made two different tables for it. And again, it's the same, but here it applies for plural pronouns. Now, Lauren, can I talk about a couple of other spell out rules that we worked on? As you can see, there's a lot. He was just showing you the pronouns, like that was just one of the main things that we had to do for the um, Like for example, we have declensions, um, and as we have here, we have um, the different five declensions, the nominative, gender, dative, accusative, ablative. And it's interesting that like um, you would have to specify in the corner, just like Joe was saying, that it's third person, the nominalization noun and it's first declension. And we mainly did use just first declension and second declension, but also you had to be careful with this one to indicate that it's a table um, and that it's suffixes, you know, opposed to prefixes, because Latin is a very suffix heavy one. Um, and then we also have for declensions, the second declen declension noun suffixes. So for this one, we had to indicate the trigger word um, which is the gear, the man, uh, and that it's excluded for this. So for this table, unlike the one we just saw, we had to make a lot of columns. So we had to have the masculine singular, masculine plural, neuter singular, neuter plural, and I believe there's even a few more. No. Okay. Oh, that's all. Okay. Um, and then we have, so this is pretty much
much as it says in the comment. This will add the correct suffixes onto the second declension noun stem based on the noun's case and gender. The reason that we added that trigger word is because there are certain words in Latin, like weir, which do not follow the standard way of doing things. And so you have to make sure that you don't include it, or that would have added some weird endings to the word weir that would have made absolutely no sense. So weir is just um, under irregular nouns. This is what we had to do with it, just to make sure it worked when we were trying to, um, to generate and translate, like the infected I example. Um, so this has, again, it has the five declensions and singular and plural. So as you see, all the spell out rules, they're very similar to one another. Um, we also have, are we doing this or not? Okay, fine. We will ignore this on that. <laughs> um, I think let's go on to the verb spell out rules. Uh, the verb to be, we had to make three tables for to be. In Latin, it's not very easy. Um, so we had to make first, second, and third as our rows and then the singular and plural column. So for the first, it's sum, sum, um, So this is the rule for to be in present tense. Um, but because to be is so complicated, we had to do past tense as well as future tense. So I think that's pretty much, there's a lot of spell out rules, but I think that kind of gives you an idea of what we did. So there were similar tables for verbs. Um, the nouns, person, and number kind of determines the ending that you put on the verb, but all of those tables look pretty much the same. So there's no reason to spend any time on them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the spell of rules. about the infected I text, which was the text that we were trying to translate. We uh, did spend some time on this, um, and as you'll see, some of the ad positions, um, a lot of them have not been put in because uh, ad positions are quite complicated, and while we were putting uh, the ad positions into uh, Linguist Assistant, uh, we ran into one of the, I guess you could say kinks in the program, um, or things that doesn't quite work. Um, what we were trying to do was take out the add position for any body part because that doesn't exist in uh, Latin. And so uh, in trying to do that, we ended up taking out all the add positions. So then we had to find another way to do that. Um, so what ended up happening? Yeah, here we go. So as you see right here, um, there's body part, which was a add position that we did not want. Um, and so what we did is we wrote uh, delete um, to delete that rule. And that's to show that um, add positions that are body parts, uh, we wanted to delete it. So if you translate it, you see that uh, there is no add position. Um, you don't see the word delete either because the rule works correctly. Um, and so what we had to do in order to get that rule in, in place was go to something that we hadn't used. Are they using adjectives? Adjectives. Oh, target stems, features, and forms. Okay. Or it might be add positions. Like trust me. We did this a long time ago. All right, so here we go. Uh, we put oh, delete into the uh, lexicon, which seems weird. You're like, why would you put an English word into the lexicon? The point is to get um, to get the add positions with the body parts out, but not to delete the rest of the body parts. And so um, these two, as you see, are uh, add positions that we wanted in the text and that were being used in the text. And so um, outside and because are two different add positions that we did in fact use, and those do show up, and we will show you real quick. see, um, and I'm sure some of the other groups uh, realize that it takes quite a bit of uh, rules. Ah, here we go. All right. 
So it takes quite a few rules to get a whole sentence and uh, paragraph translated into another language um, through Duolingo's assistant. Um, but as you see, the highlighted word, huya, um, does actually appear in uh, the text, and so the rule, in fact, works. And the last thing that I kind of want to go over, I did these ones um, kind of at the last second, because I was messing around with this, and it made me happy. Um, so under spell out rules, as Lauren told up, there are a couple of little things here at the bottom that might look a little funny. Um, Latin doesn't use any kind of special ending or whatever for the word this or that. We have a completely separate word, and it has to be declined um, the same way any pronoun would. So based on, it, it's kind of like um, an adjective. Based on the noun that it goes with, you have to decline the word this or that with a certain case and with um, a certain gender and number. So this table basically just shows you which um, ones you would use based on that. Um, I made one for that and one for this, as you can see. Um, I would show you how they work, but I'm not sure that they were working because the last time I messed with it, it kept putting the word this where I wanted the word that and stuff like that, and it was being kind of goofy. But um, since we didn't do it as a group, I never kind of worked on that. And I also added a rule that would work for um, negative polarity. So if you ever had a situation in which you wanted to say that man did not walk, you would use this word, which is non, um, and you can really put that anywhere in the sentence because Latin usually uses a different um, polarity word for persons. Um, if you saw in the elicitation, you'd use the word nemo, which means no one. So if you were saying uh, no man walked, which we had in the elicitation, you could put nemo anywhere in the sentence and you would know that it referred back to the man. So with, we use the trigger word again to show that that only works for man. Um, so as you could kind of see with what everyone was talking about, we tried to cover a big range of things. Because Latin is so piecemeal, you could do a rule for first declension and second declension and not touch any of the other declensions, and it would still work for our purposes. Um, and when we were doing the verbs, we only really did rules for the first and second conjugation because, again, they are the easiest. So um, I guess that's really it. We kind of did as much as we could, um, and we got some of the sentences working, as you saw. So um, I guess that's it. Thank you very much.